everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. Uh, the anniversary that they uh, have mentioned, Petra Gurren specifically has mentioned it now. It says, it is our third anniversary. Thank you for your support over the past three years. Rosemary and I will be streaming this Saturday morning, JST Friday Night Time Zone. See you there. I was worried that there was going to be no stream. In fact, in a previous episode, I did mention that there was no stream. So this is an update slash correction. Yes, there is a stream. It just took them a while to actually announce it, which is okay. Nothing wrong with that. Now, I'm glad they're going to have a stream. It's not an official. It doesn't look like it's an official. Oh, my God. You know, celebrating the third anniversary, uh, you know, like what Hololive would do or things like that. This looks like it's a personal stream with Petra and uh, Rosami collabing and trying to do some stuff. Of course, they also they also are mentioning their merch, which is right here. The uh, the keychain thing, the Nichi Sandy puppets. This is actually pretty damn cute. Tabletop Sandy looks cute as heck. Uh, they have like also this badge cover also looks very cute. The slippers are new. I've never seen slippers before. ID card holder for like the Japanese people that have ID cards. Uh, the plush charms as well. They look cute as heck. So they've actually for this one, they've done okay and cute merch. I will admit, I will admit, I'll give credit where credit is due. They have cute merch right now. They have, they seem to have cute merch. So that's, that's good. I'll give credit where credit is due. A lot of people don't know what happened here with Verve Vermillion. It's kind of vague, but it, uh, it rings like uh, something happened where they were told they're not so good from Niji Sanji's management, who knows, but this is a recurring theme inside of Niji Sanji about a uh, lack of competence and marketability. Freaking you had Doki Bird, who's huge right now, saying that she didn't think she was marketable. You have Nina Kosaka slash uh, Matara Khan, who mentioned that when they were in Hollywood, they felt like they weren't going to be anything when they left Hollywood. You have um, Pomu slash Made Mint, who said that when they were in heaven, they were given cardboard wings and not allowed to fly. All these things, Michi Mochi V mentioned the same thing from past livers. We have seen that um, there is an issue with the way that they treat their livers. It is absolutely not right that a liver from a large organization like this feels the need to put this publicly. It is a vent and they have every right to do this. But if it is a vent due to mistreatment by the company, that is not good. Kind of sad to see something like this from someone who's pretty chill and free from drama, unlike Edge Lord of a Genmate. Um, so there's no blame, there's no one to blame, but my lack of incompetence and my marketability. So please let your frustrations out on me and look forward to the many things to come. It's not solely up to the talents to market themselves. There's literally no effort from the company, even if you have good numbers. Look at Salome. She's one of the biggest Niji members, but she doesn't get as much opportunities compared to the other members. The company just doesn't know how to polish a diamond. Glad my favorite livers didn't end up like Niji. I dread the thought of Tenma ending up like Niji instead of Face Connect. Seriously, what's the point of joining a company if you got to pull all the work yourself? Handling the marketing is literally what managers are there for. It's literally why you join a company. That's why people join large agencies. Agencies are meant to be there to market you. That is what they do. They help marketing. They help, of course, with the creation of your character, lore, other things like that. They help connect you with artists in order for you to commission things. They do all that. That's what they're supposed to do. Clipper Matara talks about being shocked by her managers doing stuff ages like a fine wine every single day. Yeah, when she got in, she did mention that she was surprised that they asked her, it's like, do you need us to, to get you artists? Do you need us to get you lore? What do you need from us? Let us know. That was a surprise to her because she is not used to that kind of stuff happening. Probably saw some tweets by some of his fans about how they wish there was more merch of him. 100% this, especially because people really liking the keychains and are selling fast for Niji standards at least. So that's what it is. It's probably because not enough merch is being sold of him. Like not enough merch is out there. And he blames himself because he thinks that Niji Sanji isn't doing it because he's not marketable. This is BS. I don't like that. Sad to see even without context. Always felt like it was really chill and pleasant to see back when I was watching Niji. I respected that he just went on his own pace, regular scheduled streams, uh, regularly study streams. Like he'd actually put study streams out there. He gives me all terror vibes. He doesn't deserve to feel the way at all. And I pray to God that it's not Niji management putting him down. I do too. Idol has an issue on their hands. A pretty big issue in my my opinion because no one is going to be happy about artists not being paid. It looks like freelancers aren't being paid. Don't know if it's a lot of freelancers or if it's just one. Let's take a look. They made a Google Doc. Let's take a look. I have some things to share about my experiences working as a freelance mixer and audio engineer for the VTuber agency Idol Corp. Read the full document here or the thread below. Let's read the thread. Started working with Idol in December of last year when I was invited to do mixing for sound effects for their Christmas voice packs. 
Over the course of the next few months, I did most of Idol's voice packs and even worked on some covers. Very often, these commissions would come as rush projects, having sometimes less than 24 hours to be completed. For the Christmas VPs of voice packs, I needed to all of them by Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. They needed to get them out mid-Christmas Day. Wanted to be clear and say that I never minded doing these rush jobs because I could usually fit them in my schedule, and they never required an awful lot of work. I showed a lot of flexibility and always did my best to work fast and efficiently when they needed me. This willingness to do fast work fast in time isn't needed as important because I received the exact opposite from them. On four separate occasions in the span of six months, I did not receive payment on time, sometimes even having to wait three additional weeks, weeks, not days, weeks, before finally being paid for my work. Payments only go out once a month, meaning more than half of my invoices weren't paid on time. I always made sure to send my invoices on time, sent reminders when they needed to be paid, and made them as simple to review as possible. However, invoices repeatedly went unpaid or even lost entirely, causing me lots of headache and in having to chase them up. That is not professional in any way. I still have yet to be paid for my work I did for them on June 13th at time of writing. At the end of June, the announcement was made that the next round of payments was starting and we were asked to resend links to our invoices to make sure they didn't miss any. Three weeks later, no invoices have been paid so far. Normally, I'm pretty flexible with this kind of stuff. The previous three times, I was annoyed that I, wasn't being, that I was being paid late, but I know that a VTuber agency can't be easy to run, so I let them take their time. Typically, when I reached about, um, out about unpaid invoices, they were always paid within the next 48 hours. This time is different, though. I have reached out on multiple separate occasions about payments this month, and have gotten back is we're working on it. As some of you may know, I have just moved countries and actually made a lot of expenses doing this. Of course, that's not Idol's fault that you made expenses. That's you. Uh, and not receiving payments for work I did leading up to this move, which may have to cover all my expenses, is really throwing a wrench in everything. Of course, it is Idol's fault for not paying you on time. So being fair here. Yes, you did a lot of expenses. That's not Idol's responsibility. But it is Idol's responsibility to pay the invoices on time, not spend three weeks and not paying things. As a result, I reached out to other freelancers who have worked or are working for Idol to ask about whether they were being paid or not, and it seems I'm not alone. There are at least a dozen freelancers who have done work for Idol in June and have yet to be paid at the time of writing. The commissions range from simple voice packs, art, video editing, mixing, working for music, all of them unpaid. I'm lucky that my invoice isn't as big as those other creators, but the combined total in between the artists is large. Now I want to be extremely clear, this is not the fault of the talents or the managers that I've been speaking to. The talents are some of the loveliest people I've ever worked with, and some of them have even been reached out to me making sure I was being paid enough. So it, it's, it's another one of those situations where like Doki goes and, and reaches out to artists, but whoever it is, it is the ones that the accounting team isn't doing a good job. They are the reason I've continued to work with this agency despite the issues I've had, because at the end of the day, I just want to work on cool things with cool people. Please don't send any hate to the idol girls. They're the last people who deserve any. The managers I have been speaking to have also been incredibly understanding, and I believe they are not at fault at all. They simply do not have the ability to do anything else but to reach out to people above them on my behalf, which I have consistently done immediately. So it's not management. It's somewhere up in the top echelons that is messing up. I am out of options. Reaching out to individual managers hasn't worked. Reaching out to the talents I have worked with hasn't worked. Posting about it on the channel all other freelancers have access to hasn't worked. This is my last resort. So they're doing this as a last resort. They've waited months. They've waited weeks. This isn't cool. Artists and freelancers are a giant part of the VTuber community. They really are. These artists have visibly respected less and less over the years, and it's time for agencies and larger creators to stop taking advantage of us. With our creativity, they could not exist. I agree to a certain extent. And posting this simply to ask whoever in, I in Idol is the end responsible for payments and artists, talents, and staff, please do their job and communicate with us. When you run a large business with lots of staff and freelancers working for you, you're directly responsible for the livelihoods of every single one of those people. Very true. And acting with this amount of negligence can and will have significant negative impacts on many of them. If you have made it to the end of the thread and you want to help artists to be treated fairly or is someone impacted by this too, please help share this post to both help the freelancers not being paid by idle, but also make future freelancers aware of the company's type of things. And it says, we'll post updates about anything that comes up. Thank you for reading. They made an edit, clear up some confusion. I would like to clarify that payments were originally promised by monthly once on the 10th and once on the 30th, during which the invoices of the previous period are supposed to be paid. Nowhere do they state that payments will be made an entire month later. And on the occasion where I was paid on time, it was at the start of the month, immediately after the invoice was sent, not a full month later. So yeah, this is an accounting issue. This is somewhere at the top where you're having issues like this. 
they have gone through managers. They have gone through the freelancer uh, uh, section that they have on the Idle Leon Discord is what I'm assuming. They have gone through uh, actual Idle staff, as, met, as many people that they can go through. They're not the only ones going through this. Idle accounting, Idle, you know, the, the people who do accounting, the people who are in charge of this, get your act together, please. And all those at the very top, now that you are aware of this issue, you may not have been aware of this issue because sometimes things don't reach all the way to the top. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on that one. Fix it. As you try to fix contract issues, fix this because it doesn't look good on PR. Look at what's happening with Nidhi Sanji. They don't fix anything. And look at where their PR is now. You don't want this idle. I know you don't want this. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt because so far you fixed issues that have happened. But please fix this one as well. We have um, EN Branch being scuttled more than likely. Uh, being abandoned by its managers left to their own devices. Its original context is the same meme may not be true. I believe it's the current status of Nidhi Sanji. Uh, you know, they're basically scuttling the ship. They are, uh, EN is definitely scuttling the ship right now. And, you know, these are the ones that they want to save. And the other ones, I don't know. Like, these guys might be the ones that they want to save, and then everyone else is gone. And they're gone. Any color didn't make people negligible. Any color just showed us who the real negligible people are. Exactly. Uh, thy name is Riku, and thy name is whoever the hell is at the top of the management. They are absolutely negligible people because they have mistreated their, their talents. They have mistreated the money makers that they have. The actual people who make them money. Yakuma Temura Salome. A lot of... EN people who actually could make the money if they were actually properly supported. And that is the problem here. And finally, we have this. The guy you wish you would stalk you, which was cover. I don't wish anyone to stalk me, to be honest with you. The guy who actually stalks you, Riku Tazumi, of course, from any, from any color. Um, yeah, I mean, if like Hololive members start following me, my, my channel, that would be interesting. I don't think they would because I am a news channel and a lot of people don't like those, but it'd be interesting. The Japanese government has mentioned Hoshimachi Suisei in the Holo and the Halloween concert. Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, the Japanese government agency in charge of the economy, mentions in its music industry report the success of Hoshimachi Suisei and Hololive English's first concert. The report seems to analyze trends in the Japanese music business Business, such as how the music art artists like Yaosobi and Kenshi Yonezu has become popular worldwide due to UGC and other factors. Universal music, that's what it is. Also mentions Vocaloid and generative AI. Interestingly, they also mentioned algorithm. To my surprise, it's surprising the Japanese government knew about them when the only coverage of this Thai VTuber agency in Japan was on P2Y. The irony is that it says Niji Yen is expanding rapidly, perhaps because its research is based on last year. That Japanese government must not have expected NGN to fall so far. Well, no one does. It's it's a large corporation. You don't expect large corporations to fall as far as they did. And here is the you know the whole mention of the Hoshimachi Suisei thing. Um, let me see if I can get you a translation of this. Here we go. Here's a translation. Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industries report on the music business mentions VTubers such as Suisei. Ministry of Economy has um, discovered that the report contained references to VTuber agency and Suisei. Trend in the Japanese music business. The report analyzes how music artists like Yasobi. Uh, VTuber hit industry. The article mentions Hiroshimachi Suisei, a member of Japanese group Hololive, from the Hololive Productions of VTuber agency run by Cover Corporation. That's as a talent who focuses on music activities. Article also mentions that tickets for the Hololive English's first concert, Connect the World, held by the company in Los Angeles, sold out immediately. And mentions Thailand's Algorithm Project as an overseas VTuber agency that focuses on music. So it's just a short thingy here. And of course, mentions mentioning Algorithm Project, Unknown Destiny, all these things here. It's great to see that in a government agency is actually doing this type of stuff and is actually trying to pay attention to what's going on in the, the VTuber music industry. It says, if I had a nickel for every time how live VTuber was brought up in a Japanese government meeting, I'd have two nickels, which is weird because it happened twice. Exactly. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Yago himself sent an award from JP government, got an award. Yes, uh, Yago himself got an award a while back. I think it was for like, uh, like good, being a good CEO or something about the company or something like that. Um, so yeah, he did. We're looking at the schedule of Hobby Horizon. Recently, there was a, the context is, Hobby Horizon is one of the events Tokyo will be attending according to the schedule. Recently, a death of Vietnam's general secretary, which I think is like their leader, uh, has unfortunately led to the entertainment events to be whatever postponed or declined um, in regards to the upcoming two days of national mourning. A lot of countries have days of national mourning, uh, especially when it comes to places like Vietnam, etc. It's just a respect for the person who was there. Uh, unlike most events that have been announced to be postponed until further notice, event organizers decided that everything will go according to schedule until official directives, and that's triggered a public outrage, both shared posts and comments on Facebook, of course. A lot of people are, you know, hating on them 
a lot of things are hitting on them talking about like how crazy they are um and because it's, it's directive text translation for the image the event organizers are deeply saddened to receive news about general secretary nguyen futong uh I, I probably butchered it i'm sorry um futong team hobby is strictly comply with any official directives and communications regarding the national day of mourning as of now, there will be no changes to the event schedule. Should there be any changes in the event date following the government directives, the Team Hobby will be providing further updates as soon as possible in our pages, Team Hobby. I don't understand what's the issue then. It'd be one thing if the government made an official request to order two days of mourning with everything closed, but it doesn't seem to be the case. It's basically, they didn't do anything, um, like they didn't preempt it. They didn't do anything preemptively, and that's the issue. That's the big issue. They didn't do anything preemptively. It looks bad on them in a PR standpoint. That's the issue when you are a large organization or larger or a very public organization like this. It's better for your PR, even if you don't have the directives to be like, all right, I'm going to follow everyone else's thing. I know following every what everyone else is doing. We're going to do a National Day of Mourning as well. This is more small VTuber news, rumor, um, drama, tea, whatever you want to call it. Unless it is verified by the other people, these people supposedly have actual... Um, Proof. So uh, I will take it as, you know, it is, is something that has been proven. She, she's graduating. I can say everything that she had no problem hitting or kept secret from anyone. First off, I can't believe she ended up leaving everything because she can't admit to stealing art or tracing them. And they're going to go through everything down here. Say I'm going to quit art instead of actually generally apologizing and take responsibility. They're, they're accused of, of tracing art and I guess using it as their own. Next thing is a pro person who made all the contract for VC. She is the person because this is the person uh, who supposedly... Uh, Azusa supposedly is also part of VC, uh, who made all the contracts for VC. And when everyone was upset at VC and we exposed it, she told everyone it was bad because she wasn't paid. She also lied to everyone saying admin kind of forced it on her. Me and a few others, including admin are shocked at how sh low she will go to fabricate things for attention. According to this person again, don't get me wrong. After everything at VC, I cut contact with admin, but for her to go so far and beat him while he's still down and make S up. It's so wild. Yes, I'm defending my ex-boss. That's how crazy this is all this all is. Yeah, if I heard of defender ex-boss, something's up. Some of my other ex-gen mates have also been treated poorly by USA, but they're too nice to say it publicly. Lastly, it is revealed that she has multiple accounts. She would use those accounts to reply to herself and talk to herself like they're all different people. She uses her alts to farm art related things look at how she replies to this anyways about the tracing thing let's just say she was another vtuber before usa she actually got caught stealing art again need need proof just because i want to be objective just because i don't want to be seen as someone who's just popping up drama just accusing people to accuse people proof is necessary for all these things so take it with a grain of salt and this new vtuber she stole yet art yet again but didn't get as much traction as she did now so she got another model and became usa and this is other girls same time pretending they were friends but, you know, she got lucky this time and actually got streamed herself. And also, you can tell the art that also hers and also posted the same art that got her effed over in the first place. Um, Yuka Ishido was got outed for stealing art twice. And Zatama has also been posted on art trace art pieces. I'm assuming those are two people that they that she was. I did all this to spread awareness on who Usa really is. And said and since she said she might come back, I don't want her to come back and lie to everyone again. I also did this as Haru and some of my ex-gen mates were treated poorly by Usa, but are too nice to say anything. So I did. Thank you for reading this. Um, surprised because I'm actually, uh, you know, I follow Usa. That's what I'm saying. Just you need more proof than what you're saying. You, you say you have, you have proof. You say you have, um, you know, uh, screenshots, etc. Show the screenshots. Show the proof. That's why I say, I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying it's hard to believe these things nowadays with people making stuff up, with people making Google Docs to cancel others as I've been a victim of myself. It's, it, it has made me a little bit more skeptical of these things. Remember, but Usa was one of the winners. Of, uh, this person was one of the winners of Usa's art raffle. Oh no, Usa was a winner of her art raffle a while back. It was pretty rude to me when I mentioned that I unfortunately couldn't work on it due to personal issues at the time, even going so far as to make a Google Doc and promo it on her hit tweets. I just never mentioned it because I wanted to drop it. It's kind of laughable now. I'm glad I didn't end up giving free art to such a blatant art thief. Again, people are really dogpiling on her since she's gone and not no longer using Twitter. It's kind of weird. I mean, it can be uh, questionable. I take it, like I said, with a grain of salt. I'm, I'm going to mark this as a rumor. Of course, I'm going to mark this as drama. Uh, I'm so sorry it happened. Believe you were once a member of VC too, so I presume you may have known about it before. It says, yeah, ex-VC member have other less favorable experiences with USA myself, but it's best if I don't discuss them publicly. So yeah, USA, as all these people have said, I don't know if she did something to piss them off, or but people are coming out of the woodwork, it seems like, 
to uh, attack Usa. Um, and I'm following Haru. I'm following a lot of other people. So it's kind of interesting uh, when more than one person is the one attacking you. That's where you kind of have to uh, think of maybe if it's one, it's like, it's, you know, maybe you have something against you. If it's two, it's a coincidence. If it's more than that, it's something to look into. So this is a, this person here, which is uh, Tettle underscore Flow, which 16.5K subscribers, who did recently a video here where they danced with Calliope Mori. Um, and they danced along. I'm not going to put the song, of course, because the song is copywritten, so I'm not going to put the song. But they actually did did like a, a Miku Miku Doga, Miku Miku Dance, or it's, you know, basically they're, they're doing everything the same as Callie did in a recent video that she popped out with this dance. So she danced along with her, and what she's very happy about is right here. Mori Calliope said, cute, so happy we dance together. Of course. And it's like, dad? <laughs> it's nice to see dad hanging out with other kids. Kaleopi Chan, I'm so happy to get your comment as I love and admire you. Thank you. Thanks for the great song and the coolest dance. I've been listening to the song every day since it was released. I look forward to your continued success and will so always support you. I will always love you and thank you so much for being into this world, uh, being born into this world. Much love. And what did they write? They wrote here afterwards. Uh, today was a very happy day because today is the 300th day since I started writing my diary. And what's more, it's also the day I got a comment on my video from Kaleopi Chan. I've read the comment so many times and my heart is still full of lingering thoughts. Tete. So this is a wonderful thing. This is one thing that I see from Hollow Live Yen. And I'm pretty sure Niji Sanji Yen does that too because they all enjoy and love their community. But this, um, we're talking about, you know, Kaleope in this way. Kaleope does do that. She has um, hearted some things that I've done in the past and responded to some things I've done in the past. That's something like me. I am the mi most microscopic of VTubers in many cases, especially on Twitter. I'm the most microscopic of VTubers. And the fact that she responded to anything that I ever wrote is amazing. And I'm always happy to see dad doing these things. Of course, kind of in a meme way, I guess in this case. But it's actually a PSA because it is risky to uh, microwave anything with a uh, metal piece inside unless it's specifically made to be microwaved. Like a lot of the... Uh, the heavy ones that like are like warm up things usually have beads that get warmed up and not actual um, or like little stones inside that get warmed up, not actual metal. It says, guys, please stop microwaving your chibi plushies. There's metal in the tail. I hate that I have to say this, guys. Please stop microwaving your chibi plushies because it could go on fire. That's what she's worried about. She's worried about a fire risk. Thanks for the knowledge, chibi. I'll put it in the oven. This is this is Shondo. This is Fallen Shadow. Please don't explode. And that's why someone would microwave a plushie, but I'm worried that it won't like the answer. I can only think of one answer, and it's unfortunate that she's aware her fans need this PSA. Non-joke response is that I know some plushies come extremely compressed. You can heat them up to fix that, but a dryer usually used, but not a microwave. I've heard of people doing this just to hold something warm. That's why there are actual plushies that are made to be warmed up in the microwave. They are microwave safe, made for that. They're usually pretty heavy because they have like stones or something inside, like I mentioned. But yeah, don't do this to just a regular plushie. It will end up bad. You'll probably burn it in some way. Second Shondo curse reply I've seen since she's been back. So glad she's back to throwing hands. I love Chibi Doki, but I also would yeet her if I ever met her. A lot of people would yeet Chibi Doki most likely if they ever met her. Uh, she's a fun one. She's full of memes all the time. Welcome back, everybody. We are coming to another VTuber showcase for this night, this specific episode. We have Zia VT, who is our Zia VT, who is a Latina cat girl VTuber. She is bilingual. She is just there to play some fun and silly games with you, have some silly times, sometimes a chat. Sometimes just getting along with everyone else. They have been having a bit of a growth spurt, and I want to help it along, if I can, in any way, shape, or form. Of course, let's go to their actual YouTube channel. Here's their YouTube channel, where they have uh, some shorts. Let's take a look at a short to get, give you an idea of what they do. Look at your phone. Look at your... Are you watching? Oh, God. Can I have your sword? Give me your sword! Thank you. Puta! Can you <laughs> <stop it? laughs> I'm trying to learn how to use magic! Oh, I'm losing it! Can you let go? Let go! Keep watching! <laughs> I can't cut it! Oh. This is the blood of your enemies! Or your friends! Come here! Stop swinging! Stop swinging! Okay, now I can spend time with my pookie. Look at me! Oh, God. So, yeah, that's a bit of what's going on there. Uh, a bit of uh, frame rate issues, but still, it's uh, <laughs> wildness. Definitely a wild Latina going on there. Uh, we have ZVT here, who, like I said, also has a Twitch channel. We are going to take a look at the schedule that they usually have, see if they have any kind of set schedule. Basically, just streaming when they can. Uh, Monday and Sunday seem to be the times that they have right now, as you're seeing here. 
here's at 6 p.m pdt and 11 a.m pdt on sunday so they could have more stream days they could have more days where they actually decide to stream we don't know yeah, because they're five, eight, nine. So they, yes, it does seem like it's a little bit more regular than the schedule they put out there. But of course, if you see them streaming, take a look and see how everything's going to go. See if you enjoy their stuff. And thank you again, uh, Zia VT, for being a part of, or Zia VT, for being a part of this VTuber Showcase. All for right now, of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord, there's Twitter, there's other places that you can check me out, Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now, because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.